<laughs> Jeremy, lovely. This is absolute, absolutely great. Sir John Hegarty, an icon, a legend in the world of advertising, and of course, a great friend to us at Peace One Day. So thank you for all the support over the years. Can you tell me about your story and how you got to where you are today? Well, uh, absolute pleasure. I mean, the first thing about one's journey is get lucky. All right. So I was born in 1944, end of the war, coming out of it, opportunity, because I came from a very working class background, was, was there. So I was able to go to um, art school. And from art school, I went to design school. So I studied graphic design. And whilst I was studying graphic design at um, the London College of Printing, as it was then called, now called the London College of Communication, because obviously people don't do printing anymore. Um, I was introduced to the world of advertising. And the, the way I approached my creativity, because we're all creative, that's the, one of the things that everybody needs to understand. But the way I, I loved ideas. I loved having a blank page and coming up with an idea. And I was sort of vaguely frustrated with design. I mean, I love design. I love, you know, the aesthetics of it and, you know, typefaces, typography and spacing and colour and shape and form, all those wonderful things. But I always used to be, when I was in design school, I would say, so what's the idea? And people used to look at me in a kind of glazed, with a glazed expression, what does he mean, what's the idea? I'm just designing a brochure, or I'm designing something, or I, I said, but you've got to have an idea. And it was whilst I was at the LCP that I was introduced to advertising and the great work coming out of New York at that time, and agencies like Dorden Burnback, who became legendary. And what they did is that the core of everything they did was an idea, and the idea was generally funny, witty, smart, it was engaging, it made you smile, but also, crucially, it was inclusive. And that's the brilliant thing about advertising, is that it wants to include, but by definition, because you're out there trying to get as many people as possible. So it's no good having ideas that sort of are very smart and exclude. So. It was brilliant looking at this, and it was for me, it was like a, a light bulb moment. The light switch went on in the darkened room. I thought, this is what I want to do. So whilst I was there at the LCP, I developed a portfolio of advertising ideas. And of course, at that time, saying you wanted to go into advertising was a bit like saying, you know, I want to go into partnership with Diablo, you know, boo the devil, you know. And, uh, but I thought it could be great, you know, it could be great if it's done well, it respected people and it kind of... So um, I got a job in advertising and within a week of being in the, in the industry, creative director at an agency, American agency, I'd got a job with at Benton and Bowles in Knightsbridge, no longer exists. Um, walked into my office and said, um, John, I've got a writer for you to work with. Now, I was an art director, so that was where I was coming from, as you work as writer and art director. That's an important kind of uh, partnership, because you've got one person who thinks visually, the other person who thinks narratively, and this construction kind of adds tension, and that tension creates sparks. And so he walked in and he said to me, I've got this writer a uh, few to work with young writers starting out as you and I. So I said, what's his name? And he said, Charles Sarchi. And I went, oh, God. Oh, no, he's Italian. Lives at home with mum and can't spell. That's my just my luck. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it so happens. I've told this story many times. Mike. It so happens he wasn't Italian, but he did live at home with mum, and he wasn't very good at spelling. But... But he was a brilliant, brilliant copywriter and thinker. And that was my start in advertising, uh, working with Charlie Sarchi. We developed a great friendship from that. And then eventually when he started his own agency, uh, he asked me to join. So the year I came into advertising, now this is the other thing. <laughs> I, I said to him, uh, and I, when I'm talking to students these days, I say uh, 1965. And you can see them looking at me <clears throat> going, that's the last century. I mean, how old is this man? And so I, I kind of sort of either say, you know, I, I came into advertising around about the time that Gutenberg invented movable type. And that kind of worked up until about the year 2000. And I, I was talking to some students and I made that point again. I came in, you know, and I could see them looking at me going, 
who on earth is Gutenberg and what is movable type? You know, this is a digital age. And so then I had to kind of have a new line, which was I came into advertising around about the time that, you know, water was free and we paid for music. And that kind of sort of worked for a bit. So I came in there, but the other thing is, it was just about the time that the Beatles were releasing Help, and that, for me, was pretty cool. So, um, so that's when I came in. And it was a fascinating time to join the industry because the whole kind of 60s revolution was developing. It came into advertising about 10 years later because advertising was sort of controlled by large organisations, but the beginnings of it were there. And this revolution, and I think what's great about this 60s revolution, that if you look at it for the first time, it was from the ground up rather than the top down. So up to that point, you know, creative movements had been sort of in the control of quite wealthy people because they were the ones who had the time to do it. They could, you know, they could sponsor this, sponsor that, they could get these things. The 60s really were the first time that it was a kind of working class movement. It started, you know, if you look at all the great work, you look at the great people, you look at, you know, the Rolling Stones, you look at the Beatles, you look at Bob Dylan, you look at all those people, you look at the playwrights, the artists, what was happening was coming from the ground up. And I think that really made it very, very exciting. And at a time when huge change was occurring, the, the, the sort of youth movement culture, the development of the teenager that came out of the, the, the sort of mid to late 40s was really growing because of wealth and disposable income. So I think it was a fabulous time to be in the creative industries. It was expanding. So I eventually joined Saatchi and Saatchi and then worked with Charlie and uh, his brother Morris. And then I left and became creative director of a European agency called TBWA. They were starting their London office. And I can always remember us talking about Europe as a concept. <laughs> I could see people's eyes, this is like 1973, and I could see people's eyes glazing over Europe. Well, I'm, I'm in Bolton. What's Europe got to do with me kind of thing? But they sort of anticipated what was going to happen. And that was very successful. We built the London office of um, TBWA up. And then in 1982, uh, with my two other partners who I'd met and we'd worked together at TBWA, we set up Bartle Bogle Hegarty. And uh, it was kind of... Uh, uh, a great time to, again to do it because the beginning of the 80s, again, great change, big bang, all of those things were happening. Whether you like Margaret Thatcher or not, I was not an overall great fan, but opportunity was, was great. And we built BBH up into being uh, a highly regarded agency with accounts like Audi and Levi's and, you know, Whitbread Beers that were then a, a brewing company. And, you know, lots of great business that became, you know, and the work became culturally important, especially for Levi's, Audi, you know, Vorsprung Dirk Technik, which we got the, we, 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 we taught the English public to speak German very, very badly because we pronounced it incorrectly on purpose, you know. And we'd get letters from German teachers here, you, you're pronouncing this completely incorrectly. We'd say, yeah, it's the part of the joke, you know, <laughs> part of the joke. Uh, and so, we, you know, hugely successful company. And then I left that in 2014 and started the Garage Soho, which is why you see that on the wall. The Garage Soho is uh, what we call an early stage um, investment company, and we help businesses get up off the ground and find them finance and guide them and help them with brand building because that's where value will reside. And then two years ago, we then developed uh, the business of creativity, helping businesses understand that they've got to engage in creativity. If they don't engage in creativity, they will actually lose opportunity innovation, all the things that creativity teaches you. So that's the new mission I'm on, teaching people that creativity is fundamentally important to their future, not only as a business, but actually as an individual. Nice. So that's a, a kind of brief run through.